<laughs> What's going on, guys? The Steeler here back again with yet another episode of RDX Podcast. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, of course, uh, we got an amazing show with, of course, an amazing panel, starting with, of course, uh, the Naughty Dog YouTube, Cole Eastwood. Hey, man, another podcast, another show. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, where, where have you been up to, man? Uh, just thank you so much for inviting me to. Yeah, every on, week. Every week. It. It's almost like you're a permanent member. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's been good. Just kind of uh, cranking through games. I, I, I sent out a tweet today, and the official Xbox account <laughs> responded to me. What'd they say? Said, hey, Get the fuck out of here, Colt. Is that what they said? <laughs> I said I was enjoying the X, and they said, hey, we're glad to hear it. What, what's coming up next? And I said, well, probably Far Cry 5, but uh, where's the games? And then they blocked me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Lucas. Was that Luca in the background? Who yeah, was that? that? Was Luca. Oh. No, that was not me. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, and, of course, Colt's kidding. But, uh, hey, we, we also got the Ash and Luca. Thank you so much for showing up, of course, as you always do. How you been? I've been good, bro. Been really, really good. I just beat Dark Souls three again. So, oh man, yeah. that's the sixth time. Yeah, it is. <laughs> but I'm looking forward to going over these topics. It's uh, it's been an interesting week so far. Yeah, I agree. And of course, we got a ton of great topics this week. Uh, of course, you know, I'm going to continue introducing these guys. But trust me, we got a lot of great stuff to talk about. We got, uh, of course, the newest member RDX D Batch. Uh, what's going on, bud? Man, I'm chilling. I'm being consumed with this UFC 3. Man, I love that game, man. I'm just pumping hours into that game, man. Three o'clock in the morning, benders. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for get, get the fuck off the game, D. It's time for work. Oh, man. The, the, I think it's just so accurate, that game. And the fact that um, I know 2K has the tools where you can put your face into the game. But honestly, tell you, every time you do it, you just look like some mongoloid. But... Uh, <laughs> I don't think you could say that, D. <laughs> what the fuck? Excuse mongoid? me for my political incorrectness, but uh, it's a mongoid. <laughs> <laughs> I think okay, they, yeah. So you're really enjoying the game. Yeah, I'm. I'm really enjoying it because, like, my like my essence is captured in the game because EA's capture tools. You you really import your face, like it really 100 percent looks like you, and it just gets me that more into the game because I feel like you know I'm living vicariously through this game. I'm loving have it. You, man. It's have so you accurate. experienced that glitch um, where every time you render your face into the game, there's a Ryzen CPU like ah. printed onto your fucking for your forehead. Ah, it's right like what's, what's, what's the deal with this glitch? Is it just me? Uh, hey, we also got JKB. <laughs> Thanks for showing up, man. We got a lot of guest spots opening up here over the next couple of weeks, as you guys know. If you follow me on Twitter, of course. Fonzarelli uh, is is off of social media for a little bit. He can't really uh, podcast for a little while, uh, so we are kind of getting a lot of guests in and filling them out and seeing what works for the show. And of course, you know, where did he go? Uh, well, you know, he's a he's a Ninja Turtle. So he has to he spotlights as a Ninja <laughs> Turtle when he fights crime. So. You know, uh, out. He's, a, he's, a, he's a good guy, and he'll be back eventually. It's going to take a little time. So in the meantime, we got a, a lot of guests lined up and stuff, so enjoy. Jay, uh, thank you so much for coming in, though, man. Thanks for having me, man. I yeah, I was, I was watching your live stream today, and you got a great beard, man. I'm just going to come out there and say it. Thank you. I comb you it every day. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Well, it's not funny. Okay. okay. Uh, no, it's not. Not at well, all. Well, well. Uh, Thank you so much for coming on. You know, as I said, oils in it. Oh man, oils. Okay. Well, we got uh, over two hundred people watching live already. Thank you guys for showing up. Hit that like button as you can, if you can. We do have to pay the bills real quick. I got a sponsor for the show. It is the uh, Lead Gaming Podcast. It's a really cool uh, group of guys. Mariano, I listened to it earlier. These guys were talking about UFC uh, three actually earlier, and and they get really in depth with that game. They're also pretty consumed with the game and stuff like that. So I want to give a big shout out to the sponsor of the show. The link to their podcast is down below. Check it out after. I'll remind you guys at the end of the show. I uh, just want to say thanks uh, for those that support me. I try to support back. And that's how it goes. So we got uh, some pretty abysmal games of gold for March 2018. I don't know if you guys heard, but um, there's some pretty bad stuff. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tri- that's uh, starting okay. with uh, Trials of the, what is it? Trials of the Blood Dragon? I have no clue what this yeah. is. Yeah. Uh, I know what it is. What is Nobody it? played it. I don't think it's Go essentially ahead, a mix of Trails and a mix of Blood Dragon. That's mm. the offshoot of Far Cry series. And you know what? It's it's kooky. It's fun. It's over the top. Um, that it's got a cat in it and a unicorn. 
So is it like point, Trials, right? the motorcycle game? Yeah, it is that, but it it's got the oh, Blood Dragon that. theme over it. It's actually a really good game, to be honest. Hmm. I'll play that. I've never heard of it, so maybe. You know, it's funny. And Super Hot, which is the next game on the list, is actually really, really, really good. Yep. Yeah. Super so. Hot that's the next game that you can. Okay, full disclaimer: Jay's a fraud, so you know you guys got to take that into account. You know, there you go. Jay, Jay really <laughs> loves it, uh, these little games. I know a lot no, of. No, super hot, super popular. I mean, it, it's uh, kind of made a, a big wave last year, and that's kind of cool. We're getting it for free, and it's also X enhanced. Hmm. This message brought to you by Colt Eastwood. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, um, let's see if one of you guys like the next one, Disney Pixar Brave. Who likes that one? Huh? Oh, wow. You got anything good to say about that, Jay? Uh, fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, uh, yeah, Disney Pixar Brave. Um, it is what it is. You've also got uh, Quantum Conundrum in that Brave game as well. They're both for the Xbox 360, which leads me to kind of a question. Is anybody else noticing this trend since Game Pass uh, kind of came out of the, the woodwork here? We're not really getting the games that, that you would think, right? Like Metal Gear Solid Five. Uh, I think it was free on PlayStation 4, right? And instead, they put it mm -hmm. in Game Pass for Xbox. Uh, anybody in the chat noticing this trend? I know Noob's in the chat, uh, you know. Let me know because you know maybe I'm huffing too much pine saw here. I think there's there's something going on here to where now the game pass is out there. They're putting that money uh, instead of paying them for the games with gold, which those developers do get paid uh, in some way. You know they're putting it in game pass. Uh, let me know what you guys think. What do you guys think on the panel about this? Yeah, I think uh, I think that's something that's been a trend for a while. I first heard about it from Newf Newcomb a couple months ago. He pointed out like, hey, I think. I think since Game Pass came out, they're being a little lackadaisical with our Games of Gold. I'm like, hmm, that's something to take notice of. And yeah, Games of Gold has been kind of lacking lately. But Game Pass has been popping, so, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Anything to make that more appealing they to the They kind of share, consumer. too, right? Yeah. We've seen some of the games share that, that are on Games of Gold. They end up going over to Game Pass, so there might be a little push and pull there. Yeah. But I haven't seen it affected too much, just a little bit. Dealer. Dealer, look at the super chat. Yeah, I saw. I want to give a big shout out to Biggie. Uh, you know, we appreciate seventy five dollars super chat. All right, that's one of the highest I've seen, aside Biggie. from Rand's fraudulent five hundred dollar one. Aww. Hopefully, <laughs> this isn't uh, you know an accident. But uh, if it is, let me know. Really, he just said we wanted to say thanks for putting on a big show, a great show. We appreciate it, Biggie. Thank you so much for the support. Uh, you know what else can we do? Can't really do anything. Oh, else, I got to right? take my shirt off now for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got to take my shirt off now. Uh, of course, Michael Chichillo, of course, as always, dropping that 20 in the Super Chat as well. Thank you guys so much uh, once again. I can't say it enough. Uh, or well, you know, it's yeah, funny, it's dude. Funny. I do a live show every day, basically. And when people donate like this, I don't think they understand like how much it actually means to us. So I want to give a shout out to the guys that just did that for Dealer, man, because it, it means so much to us. Yeah, yeah. It, it's every little bit, uh, you know, the support means more more than anything, and, and that's awesome. But I did want to get back on topic because I'm an asshole. Thanks again, Biggie. We appreciate it, man. Uh, there's also new back compact games, Vanquish and, of course, Disney Pigs are Brave. That's uh, Newf Nukem's favorite game, by the way. Oh, I missed uh, that so. today. Thank you for the news, dealer. I didn't know Vanquish was back in Pat. Yeah. I wonder yeah. why people were talking about it. Uh, oh, cool. <laughs> Have you guys played it? No. No, I haven't. It's really ultra cheesy. It's like, a, you know, it's a Japanese style third person action shooter. Your character kind of looks like he's ripped right out of Mass Effect 2. It's a, it's a cover shooter with slow-mo. Um, it's just really good. Um, it just kind of has that, that uh, who made it? Like the Sega team and those guys. Sega, uh, yeah. Platinum. Platinum made it. So it's Sega and Platinum, right? The developers and the publishers. And it's uh, oh, just that, really that cool. Like, person, uh, like sliding type of, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, you, sl you can yeah. slide on your knees like super fast. You can go into slow-mo. You have a machine gun, a shotgun, a um, sniper rifle, grenades. And it's just really cool. The more crazy stuff you do, <clears> your, your suit overheats. So you have to manage how crazy you're out in the battlefield. Mm -hmm. But you fight all these mech robots and... and different enemies and there's boss battles it's i don't know it's probably 15 bucks right now i would assume uh yeah. you should give it a shot hey it's, uh it's that, actually worth it go ahead no go ahead i <laughs> i have nothing that i mean i haven't played the game i'm just sitting here like drinking some drink and, and colt's telling me about this game i've i've never seen so colt knows something about it <laughs> i just don't know anything about it you know so i'm just whatever i'm not i'm not really into playing old games unless they're very particular 
Like I might would play okay. Fight Night uh, if it were back compat, right? But for some reason, they just don't want to give me Fight Night round four or champion. And uh, and that's probably the one of the few I would play besides from Dead Space 3. So I'm very selective on my back compat activities. Well, but, you know, Vanquish just cool. came to Steam like not even a year ago. So it had only been on PS3 and Xbox 360. Mm -hmm. So the, that Platinum team had just ported it up to PC and put it on Steam. And now they decided to go ahead and see if they can pick up a couple more sales on 360 mm -hmm. version on Xbox One. So kind of cool. I'd like to hear in the chat if you it, put a big V if you played Vanquish and liked it. Yeah, if you play Vanquish, put a big V, right? If you like D Batch, put a big D. Hey, uh, Luca, I want to know uh, your thoughts on this cyberpunk developer talking about the microtransaction craze. Uh, when they were asked about it, they said if you pay for a full uh, price game, you should get a big polished piece of content. When I was reading that, I was thinking turd there, but <laughs> you know, I don't know why they worded it that way. But yeah, you should get a big full polished piece of content for a full, full price game. What do you think about that? You got to admire this. I absolutely think it's great with so many developers claiming that they can't make a full game without adding microtransactions. It's good to see that the devs who did the most, who did the greatest, who gave us probably the best game of this generation, in my opinion, The Witcher oh, yeah. 3, easily coming out and saying, hey, our next game, it's going to be that, but bigger and no bullshit. And I'm like, yes, thank you, please. Set an example for all these other developers. And mm -hmm. you know, they have, cause you see like Ubisoft saying stuff like, well, Assassin's Creed is kind of like The Witcher 3. And you see all these other devs saying stuff like that. People <laughs> yeah, right. want their game to be compared to The Witcher 3. They want mm -hmm. that. And I just think it's like, honestly, I think it's great. I yeah. love CD Projekt Red. The Witcher 3 was enough to make me say, these guys are godly, they're amazing. I will support any and every game they come out with. And, you know, they are definitely component, uh, proponents of the 50 to, to 60 plus hour main storyline and then 100 plus hour side quests. And it's just kind of like all of it for 60 bucks, right? <laughs> oh, I just dropped. I dropped. Just somebody just like you slammed a little <laughs> hand on the desk. Yeah. For $60. <laughs> So yeah. All of it for sixty dollars. Uh -huh. And I just think that's amazing because you know, take take uh EA for instance, you know, they'll sell you some shit like the first battlefront, you know, doesn't even have a proper campaign. Sixty bucks and it's like a hundred dollars or not a hundred, like fifty dollars for the season pass, uh -huh. which was full of bullshit. And it's like all this money for the least amount of content possible. But CD Project Red is like, no, we'll give you DLC and it'll be little pieces of DLC, cosmetic and otherwise, for free. And then we we'll have story expansions, which arguably the story expansion for The Witcher 3, like at least the first one, Hearts of Stone, in my opinion, was way better than the main quest line. So I'm just happy to see that they're sticking to their guns. I know that the official Twitter said, hey, we're not doing any loot boxes, no bullshit, but it's good to see someone actually from the company like coming out and saying that and it's just you know it's not just the people who run that twitter because we you know you don't actually know if the people who are running the media sites are connected with the devs in the sense that they're the same people you know what i mean mm -hmm. yeah yeah and i think it's important to note that there's probably going to be hundreds of you if not you know thousands of you that hear this podcast over the next week and, and you might not be cd project reds uh fans maybe you haven't played witcher 3 maybe you don't like witcher 3 i don't like witcher 2 but witcher 3 is my favorite game of all time you know cyberpunk comes out you may really be like holy shit you may think back to this moment and be like wow i remember them telling me and that may inspire you to go back and try witcher 3 uh, and i highly recommend that so they've also got uh what is this about a new trailer that's supposed to show players just how much death is actually in the game how much are you looking at this luca so yes, uh, Mike Poundsmith, he's the original creator of the game. He did an interview with a, a Spanish website or a Spanish uh, newspaper article. And he was just going into detail about a little, a few things in the game. So he said that originally they wanted to come out with this game, but when they first had ideas for the game, like the actual video game portion of the game and not just the pen and paper RPG style, right? He said that he felt like they didn't have access to the right kind of technology to be able to bring the world of cyber cyberpunk to life. But they can do that now because with where, I mean, you saw The Witcher 3, that shit was amazing. You right? saw Sharknado, anything's possible. Like anything is possible. And he says that, you know, when it comes to this series, it's, Technology is key, right? And technology mm -hmm. is what keeps the rich and the poor, it keeps them connected because since they both have access to the same technology, it gives the poor precedent to you know, overturn the rich when it comes to certain things. So I'm really looking forward to the game. The game has a lot of death, death is everywhere. You know, I actually, um, 
ever since I heard about this game coming out, I actually found myself more and more interested when it comes to like the cyberpunk aspects and media and stuff like that. So I've been like watching certain TV shows like Altered Carbon. That's a very good show. You guys should check that out if you haven't seen it yeah. before. It's on Netflix, but I concur. Yes. Yeah, it's great, right? <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to the game. I think it's going to be beautiful. I know it's going to be massive. The teaser trailer they put out like in 2013, it's just kind of like it. It's been forever since we had anything, anything from this game. And now we're actually going to get, I hope it's like an in-depth trailer that shows us some gameplay and shows us more of what we're going to be doing because it was kind of like vague, you know, <laughs> the idea was just very vague, but you know, it does also remind me a little bit of Deus Ex when it comes to like technology and how like when people implement these machines in themselves, it kind of changes who they are fundamentally. Mm -hmm. I just picture you melting into a puddle into your chair as you're talking about this, like, ah, 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 you know, like <laughs> it's just more and more and more and more and more. And it's so much we don't know. We haven't seen anything from it. We've been talking about this over the past couple of weeks because there have been rumors. Those rumors were then confirmed. Now we get this. They're talking about a trailer that's supposed to show you how much death is in the game. Uh, and why that matters at all, I don't know, because I don't know anything about the game, and that excites me. So, once again, uh, you know, hey, who was that? Ronnie Rage in the chat, right? <laughs> who did yeah. you, you just destroy in the chat, Cole? Yeah, buddy, you do get the uh, Xbox games in your PC, but you're, you're supposed to. That's They want you to. They want your money, bud. So, that's that's why they put them on PC, so you can get the games on PC. That's how it works. Nobody, nobody gives a fuck if you can play them on PC. So, welcome to 2018, and have a nice day. Welcome um, to more options, and... And, you know, just better things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great, 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 great. great. So, just to add to what Luca said there, though, I'm I'm really excited for this game because sci-fi is my favorite genre. And I've been watching Altered Carbon just like her. It's a fantastic show. Definitely watch it. And I've al I also just recently finished watching um, the new Blade Runner. And, you ah. know, if, if, if they can deliver that type of world, that type of atmosphere, that that that. that the desolate feeling that you get from that world, man, I'm all in. I'm so excited for, for that game. Like Witcher I got into because, you know, you were always talking about a dealer. So, you know, what? I said, okay, I'm going to get, I'm going to get into it, but I'm not too much into the medieval time stuff, you know, but the futuristic stuff, man, sign me up. I I'm so hyped for this game. Yeah, last time you played Witcher, I know you got killed by a wolf at the very beginning of the game, and you quit. So That's, uh, yeah, and that was it. I was like, "That damn wolf!" <laughs> <laughs> uh, Just a wild dog, wasn't it? <laughs> it wasn't even a wolf. We have run this it game pretty big, yeah. man. We've talked about this game like crazy. I'm sure people want to stab us in the chat. We're sitting here salivating. You know, Luca's melting into a puddle. Uh, you know what? It's going to be great. I can't wait to try it. Jay, you got anything to add before we move on uh, for the people's sake? Yeah, I like cyber stuff too. Okay. Cool. <laughs> All right. Uh, Burnout Paradise. You know what? We talked about Burnout Paradise Remaster when it was just a rumor. Turns out uh, it's a real thing. It's got a release date of March 9th this year. It is a remaster and on the Xbox One X. It will be native 4K. Uh, you know what? I missed, uh, I missed the whole Burnout Paradise craze, but, you know, any quick words on that? Uh, it's a really good game. It's a really good game. I, I'm kind of torn when I got this news. You know, once I saw, like, this final announcement because – I bought that game for like three bucks on PC two years ago. Mm -hmm. So I kind of have the remaster. Um, I don't have all the DLC on PC, but I've yeah. also got the uh, backward compatible version on, on Xbox, but you know, it's running at like 700 some P it's really jaggy looking, but still fun. It runs at 30 frames uh, on back and Pat. So that's like, I mean, is it going to be 40 bucks? What do you guys think? I think it is 40 bucks. I was confirmed they said, to be 40 bucks. Yeah. It's got, yeah. Like eight pieces of DLC that come with it. It's 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 native 4K on Xbox One X mm -hmm. and 60 frames per second locked in. So, I mean, it is what it is. It's a game that is how old now? Five thousand years old. How about uh, see, I came out in 08, I think, and maybe the, 07. I think it's just sort of to see if anybody's interested in that franchise anymore. And you know, Burnout is kind of a cult classic now, and I think. A lot of people who haven't played it are going to pick it up and see why it was so much fun to play that game. And a lot of people who played the original are going to pick this up just to do it again. Mm -hmm. It's got kind of a cool online uh, format, too, where you can just drop in and drop out with friends or drop in with just randoms and drive around the city. Yeah. It's kind of... That's a cool game. 
Well, the, I think the coolest part about that game was like you can race, but it's also about crashing your car. But then it's also about doing crazy stunts in the air and jumps. And it, it looks like it's simple, right? But it actually, when it comes down to it, there's a ton of variety in that. And that's what really sold that game when it originally came out. To me, yeah. that game is like SXX, but on wheels, you know, it's just. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah, actually, that's a good analogy of it. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, there's different cars. There's like full burnout cars. You can't use the burnout unless it's all the way full and you burn the whole you know nitrous out and different there's like four different types of classes of cars they added motorcycles to it it's just it's kind of a big game it's going to be it's going to be a tough choice for me when it comes out if i'm going to buy it or not i, I think he's right it will too, differ a little bit from the pc version i think they'll put a different coat of paint on it so yeah, let's see how yeah. it turns out yeah it needs a remaster even from the pc it could be much better i think it's a dx10 game or something dx9 mm -hmm. or rather so probably yeah so do you think uh, ea is uh, changing their stance on remasters <laughs> i wish they yeah. just remaster something you know that was that's what happened dealer they were people were complaining where's where's the dead space trilogy where's yeah. the where that mass, <laughs> where's, where's mass the, effect at? <laughs> yeah where's the mass effect trilogy that was what the response was to their announcement today mm -hmm. although i'm a huge EA fan. is so off the ball like how does this company exist still i just don't <laughs> understand it like, well, if they're anything like activision they're making you know most of their profit from microtransactions so that's how Oh, yeah, sorry, three billion dollars, right? Four billion? for Activision. Yeah, sorry, sorry four billion. Yeah, on, can you believe that four billion dollars on just DLC? Like, it's uh, I don't even. I'm going to sleep. Bye. Just leave me alone. <laughs> 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 like, like, no, I'm I'm being honest here. Who the fuck is spending four billion dollars on a coat in a game? Like, I just don't get that's it. Not even a coat. That's that's like FIFA coins and shit. I guess it must all be coming from FIFA and Madden. It has to I be, I think right? FIFA was like one point something billion alone or something crazy. So. No, but I just, I, I sit back here because I talk to so many different devs and so many different companies and all sorts of shit on my show, and I just don't understand how EA exists. I just don't get it. I'm so mm -hmm. happy Disney is, is rumored to be taking away Star Wars from them because they just don't deserve it. Yeah, yeah. What do you guys think about that in the chat? Uh, Disney taking Star Wars away from uh, EA because... Like the most important thing they've done. Yeah, rumored to be taking it away from EA because of their treatment of the Battlefront franchise. They're milking. Rather. I, I don't know, man. I'd say, well, hey, we what have they done with it in several years? Not much, right? Yeah, that's... The, okay, the number one problem isn't the microtransactions. It's that the games are shit. You know, they're not good. They're not good video games. So that's the main problem. I don't care about the DLC added on shit that uh, happened afterwards. It's just you can't release a $60 game with no campaign to a Star Wars fan. It just doesn't make sense. I don't know how they go in the boardroom and go, let's just make it multiplayer. It makes just because Call of Duty was big doesn't mean all the Star Wars fans want to play just Call of Duty ripoff games. Yeah, they want Star Wars stories. and Exactly. And, so, and worse yet, the progression system in Battlefront 2 is for me personally and this is just my personal experience is fucked like i've been playing as a heavy class for i got 24 hours in the multiplayer i'm sure because i beat the campaign that's probably six so i got over 20 hours in the multiplayer i'm not the best at a game i gotta play that game for a little while and get get more alert and get into it to really do well <laughs> but i've gotten a ton of kills in that game and i've only un unlocked one gun as a heavy yeah it, it yeah. just doesn't make sense Dealer yeah. and I were playing it the other night, and he kind of goes, yeah, I don't know about this. I'm like, you left, didn't you? He goes, yeah, I left like five minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what's what's kind of even scarier is like the rumor is that they're going to take it from them, but they're talking to you, uh, Ubisoft, Ubisoft and Activision. Oh, and Activision. Yeah. So it's like a lesser of two evil situation here. Uh, where do you want to – I'm kind of curious what the chat want. Would you rather Star Wars go to – uh, Ubisoft or Activision? Who do you want to fuck uh, Star Wars harder? Ubisoft or Act? Do you want it to be a game that's not really finished, but it has really cool trailers and music? Uh, that's Ubisoft. <laughs> or do you want it to be Activision, where it's like, uh, you know, uh, it's all Michael Bayed out, and you know, there's less uh, of a narrative-driven story on it? I think the best dev would be Project CD Red. Can you imagine they oh, made a Star Wars game? Oh, it looks like shit. It would be a dream come true. That would be like, Return of Kotor. It would be or the old just... Bioware, but that old Bioware has been gone for ten years. Yeah, that's Jeez. a thing. That the big the big thing here is people are like, oh, just give it to this company or give it to this company, but nobody realizes how much it takes to make a good video game. You can't just give it to somebody and be like, here, you you made this, so make this good. Mm -hmm. If you give don't understand, well, the thing is. 
well, the thing is about them, they probably don't have time. But yeah. if, you, if you don't understand the fundamentals of Star Wars, then how can you make a video game? Yeah. You know, it's it just doesn't make sense to me. I'm still well, baffled. I'm going back to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> Just wrap yourself up in your beard like a blanket and just go to sleep. That's it. Uh, hey, I'm gonna fucking hang myself. Before we move on to the next topic, I give it, give the shot, uh, the chat a shout out. Almost 400 people watching live. We know YouTube's dead today. We know people are busy, but you guys still showed up. We appreciate it. Hit that like button if you can. It really helps the show. Uh, Thanks, you know, it, it's awesome. You guys still turn up. We know ain't shit going on today, so we're trying to make a show here. Damn it! And uh, you know, hopefully, we're not putting you to sleep. So. Now, uh, there is some news of a new Upload Studio coming out, apparently. They've been talking about this for a while. Uh, rumor is it's going to hit around E3. If you guys know what Upload Studio is, that's what I used uh, for videos until about 6,000 subscribers. I used uh, Upload Studio uh, and nothing but Upload Studio uh, to make videos, render them, and post them directly to YouTube. <coughs> it, it worked back then, but, uh, you know, man, it's trash now. It's still got the old... Call of Duty, you know, overlays and Sunset Overdrive. Yeah, it's been untouched since at least 2015, if not 2014. Yeah. Uh, it still renders out at a lower bit rate than I think the actual game DVR was back in the day. Mm -hmm. uh, it has a lot of limitations. You can't add an extra layer over if you want to, you know. It doesn't put support USB mics, so you're stuck with, um, you know what? It, it's great for starting creators, and that's why I put out how many subs I was using it until, and, and I could have went further with it, I'm sure, but but it, it, it does offer an outlet for people like me at that stage or people like Titan Drago in the chat. Uh, yep. You know, even though he's using the PC way earlier on than I ever did, you know, it's just, uh, it's great. But at the same time, it's really outdated. It's trash right now. Uh, compared to the good stuff, like my last video, it looks like you're playing the game almost, and 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 you got to use professional software to get that kind of quality. Unfortunately, so I don't know. Uh, nobody in here really uses Upload Studio, so I can't really ask them what would you like to see. I would just say give them the option to use uh, higher bit rates on videos, and and let them use USB mics like a Yeti. Maybe plug it into your Xbox, record with that. There's a lot of potential there. They just have to allow it. Yeah, use whatever USB mics are supported on the Xbox, which... Uh, I don't think they are. Are any? No. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Just make a little, like, 46 kilobyte patch and get that support going. I mean, mm -hmm. it would be cool. I mean, I know a lot of people out there would like to be able to just put together a nice, decent montage and maybe talk over it and upload it for their friends, and we need to do that. I mean, still, the, the X does a massive improvement over the PS4 Pro for game DVR. Mm -hmm. And uh, like Dealer and I are doing, we're pulling that the thumb drive out, putting in our PC, and, and making some really nice looking videos thanks to that good footage. And um, yeah, it's it's a good thing, and they need to take care of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, Xbox DVR is amazing. That's what I use. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's also the uh, the avatars for Xbox are also on their way. They'll probably be here before E3, somewhere around there. Uh, the reason they were delayed is because they have an employee build uh, and they had to send all out all this new code to the employees uh, so they could get it to the alpha ring and test it all on time. And, you know, it's about five, six months behind schedule by the time it comes out. But it is coming out. And uh, you know what? Use it, not use it. It's an option. I think it's interesting at the very least. Um, I'm sure Luke is uh, definitely not going to use that at all. No, I uh, have... <laughs> Zero interest in it. <laughs> oh, wow. If if they made it actually good, it could be another selling point of the Xbox One X, seeing how it can capture 4K, 60 frames, HDR content. If they improve the upload studio, to, you know, to something even comparable to Premiere or something, I know that's wishful thinking, but you know <laughs> oh, what I'm yeah. saying. No, something, only... something that can at least deliver you on the same quality. Of course, you're not going to have all the same tools, but I, the hardware can support it. I, I think. I don't know if someone's sleeping in that department, but that should have been done a long, long time ago. Should never have gotten to the state. Mm -hmm. Hey, what's yeah. what's going on, Rand? Rand's in the chat. Um, man. Okay, so yeah, it's probably not going to happen, but we'll see what they do with it. Uh, Devil May Cry Five. Uh, basically, right now it's be it's set to release early 2019. Uh, there definitely is no specific platform details, meaning we don't know if it's exclusive to one or another, but at the same time, they're saying Sony is helping to pay for development here, meaning it's probably going to be exclusive to PlayStation for at the, at the minimum quite some time. Uh, Luca, what do you think about this? You want to play Devil May Cry 5? Yeah. Uh, if they, 
you know, give us a return to form in terms of Dante and not like that DMC stuff, which I heard that game was fine. It's just uh, people play Devil May Cry to play as <clears throat> the original Dante, not Americanized Dante. You know what I mean? So <laughs> we'll see. And if it is a PlayStation exclusive, I'll just play it on my PlayStation. Yeah, not scale bound Dante. <laughs> That's what he kind of looked like. <laughs> he actually yeah. does look like him, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's in Game Pass. I don't know if you have Game Pass. I know you're getting it, right? Mm-hmm. It's hard not to with with that recent announcement a couple months ago or a month ago. So yes, it's in Game Pass. I do recommend you trying it. I, I know it's a 60 frames per second as well, which is something you could appreciate. Forza Motorsport Seven finally getting a, a spectator mode, and I've got some pretty hardcore Forza guys that check out the channel. They even recognize Forza Motorsport Three min- menu music in the background during some of my videos, right? So uh, I'm sure those guys will appreciate this, but Forza's multiplayer is just so, I don't know what's going on. Uh, You need to fire that stupid idiot you have doing your multiplayer stuff because for the past couple games, there's always the same problem, meaning it's the same asshole coding this stuff. And in Forza 7, great game, potential to be the best Forza of all time, but then you get into a, a multiplayer lobby and it's rendering all this stuff in real time in 4K, and the thing is chugging, right? Uh, you, you can barely select a car half the time before a race starts. Uh, there was no spectator mode until this recent update. You know, things like that. They always take a step forward, and then they take like yeah, three and a half, three, three and a half steps back. Why not, right? So they never added club garages back. They always taken some shit away people want, and they're really horrible at listening to fan feedback when it comes to the cars they select uh, for their car packs. So. This is probably the last Ultimate Edition I'll buy from Forza. You know, basically you get the game early and you get all the car packs, or at least six of them. Uh, it's worth it money-wise, but those first six car packs are always underwhelming. They always add in some dumb shit. Like, here's a limo. Go wreck everyone. You here's know? a Hyundai. You know, for hardcore <laughs> Forza guys like me, it's just so stupid. It, it doesn't... It's You're not serving your community at all. So, I mean... Wait, you're not going to use the Geo Metro hatchback? Nah, it's just... I, I can't do it, man. I can't even fit in that thing. That would actually be kind of cool. See yeah. that he's the reason why we get that shit. Hey, yeah, I just welcome. sat down with Microsoft in their board meeting today, and I said, "Dang it, we need more Geo Metros." <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, can we get a Jeep in the next four? So put it on the cover, make it, you know, put give it the best tires. We don't I mean, have enough three-cylinder cars <laughs> to make uh, make um, trophy trucks competitive around a track you know which which oh, doesn't yeah. make sense so uh it's just it is what it is why nine power thank you so much in the super chat he says dealer you're not boring don't worry keep up the great work thank you thanks man i appreciate it i didn't i didn't mean that i hope i'm not but i'm sure i am sometimes we all have those days that's what i'm trying to say so forza 7 update for those that care i'm done caring i was the biggest forza fan in the universe uh and now it's like until they start changing adapting to their community uh, you know, I still think it's better than this competition easily just because of physics and stuff, but they've got to change some stuff up for sure. They've had the same upgrades for a decade since Forza 2. Nothing's really changed upgrade wise. They might have added one thing, taken one thing away, but that's about it. So, um, okay. So, Gravel, Luca, you linked me to this story. What do you think about this developer? Keep in mind, as I've said a million times, Xbox One X has a minimum of 30 frames per second overhead over the PS4 Pro meaning they can either stick that into pixel density, graphics, uh, they can use the extra RAM to increase textures and, and filtering and all that. But the guys behind Gravel, a off-road rally type game, said, you know what? We're making the Pro and the X the same. Uh, do you agree with that kind of thinking? As a matter of fact, the Pro version has HDR and the X version doesn't. I know it's a little harder to code HDR on the Xbox platform. They do it differently. Um, but what do you think about that kind of parody? Um, personally, I don't really like it, uh, overall in the grand scheme of things when it comes to other developers, no one cares about this game and no one's really going to get it. So whatever. (laughs) All the Sony guys are going to buy it now. Look, look at the pro version. Yeah. I just think that if you have a platform that can do more and you can put more resources into it, I don't, I don't know why you wouldn't do that. I don't know why you wouldn't want to have the best possible version of your game for every platform it comes out on. Because, I don't know, maybe having HDR would have incentivized some people to pick it up on the Xbox. But like I said, it seems like I, I've never even heard of this game before this article mm-hmm. came out. So, yeah, this good luck to it, I guess. <laughs> yeah, good luck. I mean, that's not a, that's not a way to, to incentivize anybody to check out 
any version of the game if, if you're just nerfing the bit like i don't want my 1080 to be nerfed because of a 1060 for instance right like it doesn't make any sense uh not to just do more to raise like how hard is it to just raise the resolution it you, sure you makes click your, the button and boom you're lazy. there just it sure laziness. makes your team look lazy, doesn't it? When, yeah, they're like, well, I mean, we can get more out of more hardware, but, uh, nah, uh, you know, whatever. Who needs hardware? Hey, you missed me, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Gosh. Uh, yeah, I mean, it would be one thing if it's like they couldn't do HDR on the PlayStation 4 either, but it's just kind of like they're choosing not to implement it. And it's mm -hmm. like, okay, why would you do that? You know, I feel like. Especially if it's your game, you should try and do the best for your game and encourage consumers to pick it up. Yeah. Any extra edge, especially if it's a like a smaller known title, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You, don't you, as an artist, as a developer, don't you want your game to to realize this, this truest vision on console in some way or another? Like, yeah, but let's let's take a little bit of realism that this super <laughs> small studio has to be super uh, tight for money. Yeah, tight for money. And and everything, every time we talk about better graphics or higher quality, everything costs money. You know, 4K textures, it's not just hardware and power. It's money. It costs money to do that. No, that's the thing, though. The GPU and the X automatically is just faster. Like what? Yeah. How much harder is it to say, all right, well, it's running at, you know, 87 frames per second where the Pro is, is hitting 60 in this resolution. Well, do they not the have Pro a depth resolution? Why not just raise the resolution on the X version? Maybe this team doesn't have a, an Xbox One X dev kit. They do. You oh. can't You can't make your game enhance without one. All right. Well, there you go. <laughs> Dealer has spoken. I don't know. Jay, what Let's do you think about this chips. real quick? <laughs> no, I, Jay really did go to sleep. Sorry. I was. I fell asleep. Um, <laughs> <laughs> gravel? Like, uh, uh, I uh, honestly, guys, gravel. <laughs> Like we're not talking about great notes here. <laughs> okay, so uh, no, I'm just like when somebody brought up this game to me, I looked it up and I thought, what is this game? And then the fact that they're not doing that, like it makes no sense if you're trying to compete against other racing games to not implement f implement features. That's not even the right word. Features that you see in other games. Mm -hmm. But like you guys said, maybe it has to do with the actual. Uh, amount of money that they they have right but you know on the other side of the coin you got to give them credit for making the game in the first place they must have some sort of vision there so yeah. maybe the game's good i've personally never played it right but mm -hmm. i mean how many mediocre racing games come out that just like have one version and disappear after six months yeah. you know there, there was always tons of those games it's very hard to break into that when you have forza and, and gt like, I just don't, unless you have something different, it's like, I don't know why that's there. The crew, yeah, too. You have a good point, though. You are competing with other racers on the platform, so you kind of want to stand out. Because these developers are like anybody. They're like athletes in a way that they want to compete with each other, right? Uh, and, uh, you know, you'd think they would. Frankie, your son, thank you so much for uh, the super chat. He said he wanted to stop by and say, what's up to everybody? We appreciate it, man. Um, so, yeah, that's Gravel. Most of you guys are just now hearing it for the first time. Give it a Google in the background. Uh, it's it's a it's a rally game. Some of you guys are looking for this kind of stuff, though. I ain't gonna say nobody cares, but you know, at the same time, apply yourselves, uh, do what you want. We gripe a lot, you know, but it's not like it was in the early and mid '80s when everybody was making a game and they didn't <laughs> care how good it was. Like <laughs> if you really look at almost every single game that comes out on these past couple generations of consoles, they're all really decent games. Mm -hmm. I think it was early on in the 360 and PS3 era where you could see like some no name generic game on the 360 or PS3, like a racing game. My brother got me this motorcycle game that I'd never even heard of. And it was just like it's something he bought for five bucks at Fred Meyer. You know, you don't see that very much anymore. And um, it, to say that gravel is this low budget piece of crap, it's like it's kind of a compliment that games are actually kind of decent no matter what you get. Crazy Gamer says it's a very poor man's dirt. So I yeah. know on the PC it's uh it it's gone through beta and alpha stages and stuff like that. So Colt, you got any of those? Uh, we missed RDX questions last. Yeah, I've got some stuff. So go ahead and read one or two off if you uh, got a second. Uh, our good friend Titan Drago has a question. He mm. says, um, if the generation was flipped and Xbox One sold eighty million instead of PlayStation. 
Do you think Sony would be doing the same consumer friendly options that Microsoft is doing? Hmm. Luca, you take that one. Wait, I'm sorry. Can you repeat the question? <laughs> God. <laughs> if the generation in the other room. If the generation was flipped and Xbox One sold 80 million consoles and PS4 sold 40 million, do you think Sony would be doing the same consumer friendly options that Microsoft is doing now? Yes. Really? All right, ne next question, guys. And what, yeah, what, I mean, what way do you think that would be? Okay? Well, I think that after the mistake they made with the PlayStation 3 launch, they would do everything in their power in order to regain consumer trust. Because if, you know, after the blunder with the PlayStation 3 in the beginning, and then they regained momentum, and then they came into this generation and they fucked up again, that would be pretty bad. Like, that would be a really bad look on them. They probably would have changed leadership up. And I definitely think they would have been doing a lot more consumer friendly practices and they probably would have had more, more games in the beginning as well mm -hmm. Noof, compared Noof, to how it is um, now. Noof says Noof doesn't see it quite that way. He says he thinks they might drop the console price and that's about it. I don't know. It's Sony, you know, um, Microsoft got hit hard, really, really hard uh, in 2015. Mm -hmm. And I've always said, I've said it a million times. That was a good thing. Uh, you know, the policies changed that came around and, and we have what we have today. You can enjoy the same great games that you really care about, unless you're looking for more of, uh, you know, those Japanese uh, style games. You know, PlayStation's got it and Spades over there. But other than that, you get pretty much all the games you want uh, for the most part. And you know what? You're, you're getting the best versions on the X. So I don't I don't think if not for for that in 2013 and Sony being how how uh, prosperous they are right now, that you probably wouldn't have any of that. What do you think about that, Jay? I that's a tough call, right? Like Sony is Sony. And I mean, right now I'd say Microsoft is more friendly to, um, you know, I wouldn't say they're fans, but they're more uh, customer friendly than ever. Mm -hmm. I just think Sony, uh, I don't know when like 2013, when Xbox made that horrible mistake of saying like, you got to, you know, connect to the internet to use your Xbox. And then Sony jumped on that and was like, here's how you can trade games with your friends. Remember that ad? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel that Sony will always be that Sony. The one that's like, if another company makes a mistake, they'll jump on it. But if they make a mistake, then it's something else, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, I don't see them. Yeah, <laughs> I, I just don't. I, 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 it's impossible for me to see that because it never happened. It's complicated. <laughs> yeah. It's complicated. Uh, yeah, good question, Titan. You got one more quote before we move on? Yes, this one's from Astra Gaming. Says, oh, man, what's going on with Crackdown? Is it coming out this year? <laughs> oh you know God. what? I say this to people, and even people that do YouTube, like myself, they seem to forget that Crackdown only had one release date. It's only been delayed once. Right, so um, that's actually not all that horrible if you think about it. Yeah, uh, and I think that those rumors last year were that the single player was going to come out. Then this year, the multiplayer was going to come out. Those were definitely true. They pushed the game back because the single player was ready, but the multiplayer wasn't. But they knew if they released them separately, it would be not really a cohesive package. And you've got to agree if you go and watch that crackdown tech footage of them destroying the buildings and how crazy and next level that is, that if the multiplayer works like that which who knows if it will, then that game is going to be insane. The multiplayer is going to be nuts. So I, I'm more of the, and always have been, more to wait and see. Uh, I've got a little faith that it's going to come out uh, this year and be fine, hopefully. Provided that multiplayer works, uh, I think it's impossible for that game to be shit on, you know, even by the craziest fanboy. Before E3 or will, after? Um, yeah, do you think they'll show something at E3? Yeah, I think they'll. Sh that's what they're going to do uh, this E3. They're going to show you some proper State of Decay 2 footage because I don't think State of Decay 2 comes out until after E3. And then I think Crackdown was rumored for July. They're going to show you that multiplayer for the first time ever uh, properly on the E3 stage for Crackdown 3. <laughs> so. Yeah, I think, I think they got a little scared when they realized that they showed the destruction in multiplayer. And then when somebody said, can you do that in single player? They said, no. <laughs> mm -hmm. And they were like, what? Wait a minute. And the fan base was like, wait a minute, you can't destroy buildings in single player. Like it just doesn't make any sense. Well, Their turnaround was, well, you're a good guy in the single player. Like you're not supposed to blow up all the buildings, right? Yeah. Yeah. But the, I think the point, the, 
<laughs> the the point that I guess the point was that they they just did horrible marketing on it. They should have yeah. they should have been much more clear with the fan base. Like, hey, you get to go nuts in multiplayer and single player. You're a good guy. What kind of um, story is Crackdown? Like, what's it's, the typical well, it's, narrative? It's just like futuristic. Think um, think RoboCop, but there's a yeah. bunch of them, and instead of RoboCop, they are kind of like superheroes. <clears throat> And the enemies also have some sort of tech, and they just they fight back and forth. That's you know essentially what it is. all this. Yeah, you're mindless, super agent. Mindless fun, right? And yeah. and for those that really crave a, a ton of narrative, you know, it's it's not going to have that in in the way that you want it, like Witcher Three style or anything. It's more of mindless fun in the vein of Dead Rising Four. Uh, no, but like that's, that's yeah, not a bad thing for some people. It's cool because every time you punch somebody, you earn. Uh, experience for your punching every time you jump and, and get an orb that's up high you can run faster and jump higher every time you shoot an enemy you level up so you're you increase damage on all those different levels and you're driving like everything has its own level so when you're running around with your friends like you're trying to like just make your halfway through the game you can jump over yeah. buildings like you did in uh, saints row 4 that that game multiplayer part two was so much fun man it was like it was, it was kind of like taking GTA and putting it on its head at the time. Yep. And the multiplayer was so much fun. Like, I remember just getting in two different cars and just ramming them into each other to see where we would fly. Mm -hmm. Hey, we got to give a shout out to Mel. Uh, I plan on having her on the show uh, in the next, at least in the next month or two. So uh, mm -hmm. thanks for checking it out. That's, Rand uh, says May is a dead month. That'd be a good time to launch. Uh, mm -hmm. a title like crackdown or yep. or something of any game that's ever been delayed i keep telling people that I, it's the most understandable for crackdown because this hasn't been done in any game like this ever before so there's a proper reason for this so i don't uh, know I, d d do you want to come alive uh you know what are you what are you doing over there you he's dead? working on his mining over there <laughs> <You see mine. laughs> I went off the line. I was like, what the hell's going on oh no yeah crackdown d real quick uh, I'll just tell you, uh, I'm I'm looking forward to it. I, I really want to see what this cloud compute is going to do. They've been touting this forever, and uh, I, I wanted to see what it can do. Um, I don't know what to say. They need to it's show new it. tech, right? It's exciting to people like you and I. I yeah, think I, th it, I think it's going to change the industry. I think I, I think it's going to be successful. Mm -hmm. I really do. And if it is successful, you're going to see a lot of games following suit. You're going to see a lot of games wanting to use this technology when you see how much it can really scale up because it's going to be doing things that just aren't possible on your local hardware. And it's just going to make that game that more and more, that more immersive, you know, mm -hmm. with the, especially you're blowing up the whole damn city. Come on. Yeah. I, I, think, the, I, with pistols. <laughs> I think the game is going to drop October or, or around there. October. September. Yeah, I don't. Th I don't think it's a. I don't think it's a summer game. I think. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's October game. I don't think. I don't think it'll be yeah. September. I think September is pretty much Spider Man. I think people are going to leave that alone. I think it's going to come out October because everybody's getting slayed in November. So nobody's. Wait a second. October isn't Red Dead Two coming out in October? I think it's November, isn't it? Yeah. Nope. October. It's October. No, but, it's October. Oh, well, then they but, were not releasing October. Damn well, it. the thing is, though, they <laughs> they have to they have to do something. Like, what other game does Microsoft have to go? Hey, here we here we go. Here's games this year. So, do they drop this early? And I risk? don't. I don't know, JKB. We could see um, one surprise exclusive at E3 that is set for holiday 2018. Yeah. I mean, they're kind of trying to steer a little bit in that direction to stop announcing games so far out so that could be a possibility but you know they're gonna drop the game they could they could show some stuff at gdc and it could launch in the summer too yep well uh that was a great question ashtray thanks we also got to give a shout out to top fraud in the uh, chat pretending like he knows what good racing games are that's great <laughs> top dog we we appreciate your support we know it's hard for you to drive and break and turn and shit in forza and we hope you figure it out uh we're gonna i'm gonna send you a copy of uh barbie horse racing 2018 and we're gonna get you started on that track he's uh, the only one that uses that geo metro in in forza 7. <laughs> he's got all the assists on he's like these physics suck <laughs> Turn them on, bud. Hey, uh, you no guys power gotta, steering. gotta get through these topics. Uh, and and two guys, we got 450 people watching live. Hit that like button if you can. We try to get up to around 300 before the end of the show. I know it's kind of hard to do because it's only an hour show, uh, half the length of a normal show. But uh, we try to get those same goals uh, just that hour, and we appreciate it. Mafia Three developers hit with pretty big layoffs. I can't say I'm surprised, uh, but I thought that game did well. Thought it did four million in like the first month or two. Um, apparently not. Maybe they got a bunch of old 
copies that are just sitting there. What do you guys think about this? I would say that I'm not surprised that, you know, they're doing layoffs. That Just the bad publicity alone from Mafia 3 with all the bugs. I don't know, man. It was kind of it was kind of rough. Yeah. Yeah, I did have a lot of bugs in the beginning. It really did. Yeah. I, I ended up getting that game a little bit late in the cycle when it dropped in price for the simple fact that it had so many bugs. And uh, when I got my X, it was an incentive for me to get the game because it got Xbox enhanced and it corrected a lot of those problems. But yeah, it did it. I, it didn't have a smooth launch and you know there's some repetitive stuff in the game and you know it, it was a, almost was it, it was repetitive as hell the story but the story the narrative was so mature and just uh yeah. it gave zero fucks and, and you listen to jimmy him and hendrix on the main menu you know that kind of stuff like it was great yeah uh we got someone echoing by the way so Hey, uh, you know, it is what it is. We'll move on. Uh, we also got Rainbow Six Siege. They say they are not looking to put a sequel out there. Uh, they are trying to get 100 operators out there, and they will be adding to Rainbow Six Siege wow. uh, for the next 10 years, which wow. is hard to believe. The new Counter-Strike Rainbow Six Siege. I think that's what they're trying to do here. Well, that game is, I don't think people realize, that game is massive. It's massive for Ubisoft. So... Yeah, I, I don't know who's echoing, but someone's echoing. Yeah, let's do. Um, uh, let's all do a little check real quick. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Hey, uh, it but it is a, big though. Yeah, that that's a big deal. I know that they just put on the championships now in Montreal. Mm -hmm. So that was a big deal in Montreal here over in Canada. It was like polar bears and a beaver showed up, but uh, it was <laughs> it was a. Uh, it was. I saw some of the photos and stuff. Like th that game is like a massive following, and uh, to have like a hundred operators is is pretty unique if you think about it, because they each have their own skills and blah blah blah. You, you get into your own strategies as you get into the game. But um, I think that's exciting for a company to say that. That's pretty ballsy. It, it must mean that they believe in it, right? Yeah, but Destiny said the same thing. They're like, yeah, but Destiny also. Destiny is Destiny. I mean, it's. You can't overshoot your mouth. If you say like we're going to deliver this and you don't deliver it, that's the end. It's it's simple logic. So mm -hmm. I think that uh, R6 has delivered on what they promised in the beginning. They wanted to go back to the roots of strategy with a team, and they nailed that down. And a lot of people love it. Yeah, uh, you know, there was a little light on content initially, right? They kept adding, well, and, course, adding yeah. and adding, and adding. They I turned think, it into more of a service, right? You upgrade every year, every totally, eight yeah. months, and, and it's seasons now, right? Like Killer Instinct. Totally, like D Destiny promised the world to us, and we got, you know, crash. Quarter, yeah, it was. It's fun to walk around for like six hours, and then you you throw the disc out the window. You're done. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the did you ever uh, crack that copy of Destiny open, or did you save a lot of time and money? Uh, you know what happened? I, I I actually sent it back to the store to be completely honest with you, <laughs> and I ended up I ended up exchanging it for uh, Dragon Ball Z because everyone was just saying how horrible it is. Luca was saying, "Oh, I'm done playing it," and I, I was waiting on everyone's rapport on the game, and I just I didn't open it, so I returned it back to Costco. That was it. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't blame you. Shit. Uh, hey, we're getting an uh, update here soon for 1440p displays. Uh, much like when you plug your X1S or X into a 4K TV, it says, hey, do you want to go Ultra HD? Uh, I've said this before, but you click that button. It says, fuck yeah. And then, you know, the dashboard goes to that resolution and whatnot. Now you got one that's for 1440p users coming soon. So if you want to play on a one millisecond re response time monitor, stuff like that, that maybe only be 1440p, you'll get that. And all the automatic super sampling and stuff will come along with that. Now that's good. And that's going to help uh, Grand Theft Auto V Premium Edition look uh really good uh apparently grand theft auto 5 is getting an xbox one x enhancement uh it's coming through the form of the premium edition i'm guessing they're releasing like kind of like a game of the year edition but it'll be called premium edition and when that releases all current owners are going to get an x patch for grand theft auto 5 and of course you can go out and buy that disc or whatever but they say it's going to be 4k and all mm -hmm. that good stuff what i haven't played grand theft auto. it's going to be 30 it's going to be cpu bound yeah so, I mean, yeah, 60 frames is just such a, a game changer for me. So it's just it's still going to be 30, but hopefully, more importantly, uh, it's not just resolution. It's it's better settings. So I don't know. Anybody in here play Grand Theft Auto? I'm kind of over it. 
right yeah, now. Yeah, I, I, I have it for the PC, so I, I, I definitely won't be double dipping in this one because there's just no point, and I modded on my PC as well. But for the console guys, it, it, it is good, and like, and, and to speak on this 1440p mode, really and truly, with the software that they have in there, sorry, not the software, the hardware that they have in the system. Honest to tell you, if they wanted to, they could optimize it for 1440p, 60 frames per second. They could. Well, I mean, it's it's going to be too CPU intensive for for the box, so they're going to be bound to to 30 or 40 frames. They might as well cap it to 30 and just raise it to 4K. It could be one of those games because you know they they always like to push the envelope. Maybe they're one of the first games on the X that actually uses the FreeSync 2 capabilities. Maybe. Maybe because these Samsung TVs that are coming out uh, later on this year that are touting that feature, they're going to need a game to show that off. GTA Five on PS3. Yeah, actually, I think year. I think both the Samsung monitors I have have FreeSync built into them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we got a lot of uh, Grand Theft Auto fans. I remember one time I was reviewing Mafia Three a long time ago, and I was like, "Yeah, I like the driving more than more than Grand Theft Auto because Grand Theft Auto. I like Grand Theft Auto Four. Uh, the way it did physics much more because you remember comparatively the 360 had a much more balanced architecture. The, the CPU wasn't quite the bottleneck uh, that is on the current today's consoles is like a big GPU with a little tiny CPU kind of super glued to it with, with, you know, back then the, the 360 was a little more balanced. So you had way better physics uh, yeah. on things like Grand Theft Auto four than you do Grand Theft Auto five. Very and, weighty uh, cars and, yeah. and smashing into and cars, you know, like, T-bone in another car, like it was half the fun. Like when you get chases in your car, would just yeah, you had to know how to drive, over. right? Like yeah. if you were playing online, you had a guy that learned it, and, and it definitely wasn't top dog. But you had a guy in there that knew how to drive, <laughs> right? And you hit the brakes, and you you had to you know outrun the cops, and there was more to it. But in GTA Remember Five, the first time you saw somebody grab onto the handle of the car when you were jacking it from oh, them, and yeah, they're they hanging on, and you're dragging them for <laughs> half a block, <clears throat> and so you'd steer them into an oncoming car so they'd let go of the handle. Like, <laughs> I mean, that was so fun. Yeah, that was fun. That's what Colt does to his kids when he drops them off for, to school. <laughs> I, used to, I, used to girl. I used to slow down, let them grab the door, run off yep. a little bit, slow down again. Like, yeah, it was pretty fun. I remember. Yeah, that. it was pretty cool. Yeah. And that was a new thing, you know. We we hadn't seen uh, physics like that in games, and that was uh, the Havoc or whatever it was engine. Euphoria, Euphoria. I yeah, think. the Euphoria. Yeah, yeah, it was just really cool stuff, and it was uh, that was a game changer back then. Yeah, it was great. We're uh, used and, to it now. I mean, we're not saying it's perfect, but there were things about four that were. I mean, fuck. For in GTA Five, you can steer your car in midair. You know, like I don't. You know, <laughs> you, you can. <laughs> Top just Dog don't, can do that in Forza Seven. Yeah, I just don't like that shit. So, uh, yeah. not shitting on five. Uh, not saying four is better, but there are things about each one that are kind of better than each other. I think they sh- could have or should have kept the physics from four. Hey, uh, did you hear about this Gears of War thing going on, Jay? Uh, the developers. A rumor to be letting Splash Damage take the lead on the campaign. Um, and for those real quick that don't know Splash Damage is, I did a video on this earlier. If you want more details and theories and opinions, check out that video. It's my last one. Uh, Splash Damage are basically a team for hire that uh, help with assets and things. For instance, they've worked on like the Batman Arkham Origins multiplayer, right? Which was was unique. Not saying it was great or amazing, but it was unique. They, they did Gears of War 4 multiplayer. They helped with that. They're a team for hire, like a mercenary in the gaming world, right? So uh, basically, according to their website, they are uh, hiring and have hired positions for Gears of War 5. uh, And according to the sources, they are taking the lead in the campaign for Gears 5, which is... uh, Could be trouble if you really think about it. But then again, Uh, maybe it's not. I mean, what do you think, Jay? I know... Not that I have inside information here, but I do know a lot of Xbox employees that jump ship from the Crackdown team to go onto the Gears team. That literally happened today. A ton of them switched over. So Maybe Crackdown's wrapping up development. Well, Crackdown's Mark's done. Been canceled. Yeah. Well, it's been, canceled. <laughs> <laughs> it's been uh, thrown out. So they're heading over to that team. But what I find kind of strange is like the coalition, which is actually named after something from the game is not involved with the single player anymore, that just raises questions, right? You start to go like, why would they get a third party dev in there to help unless they didn't quite understand what was going on? But I'm gonna spin this to uh, kind of to a positive instead of a negative. You could look at it as the studio has no fucking idea what they're doing, so they're bringing in help, right? Here's, here's what I got for you, okay? And I got a little inside information here. 
Uh, I just got Ooh. it. I just got it about. And Steeler leans in and opens his jacket ever so slowly. Yeah, I I, I got it about uh, an hour, an hour and a half ago. Uh, of course, I'm not going to say who this was. Crackdown canceled. He said, let's just say that splash damage are not working on the Gears 5 campaign, but a new Gears game. What? Uh, so you're telling me that Gears 5 is still being coalition and then they're working on a separate game. Oh, you know what they're doing? Oh, God. A card time- game? No, no. no. <laughs> Gears of War card game. I, I'm going to call it right now. I guarantee that they're working on Gears 5, an add-on for Gears 5 that is Battle Royale in the Gears universe. Mm. That's what it is. It's going to be attached to Gears 5 when Gears 5 launches. So Gears 5 is still being worked on, and those guys are... That's my guess. That's totally my guess. That would be nuts. In the Gears of War world, like... uh. Like, can you imagine a massive field with all of the obstacles and the and the running they do with vehicles? The problem is, like, every studio wants to add that into their games. Yeah, now. and it's going to be the norm going forward. I I really think in the fall, if not the fall, maybe the following year, because I don't know how long they've had this in their pipeline. But a lot of games are going to implement that. That's it for could sure. be. I offered several theories uh, in my video, and this one, if they're working on, because that's all that <laughs> I said, they're working on a, a new Gears game. Um, you know, and keep in mind the sources are onto something. This stuff was leaked through Splash Damage's own website, their employment listings. They are doing something big with the next gears, they're working on something with gears that they were not previously doing. They're hiring new audio engineers, programmers, uh, and art directors and stuff like that. So th- there is something going on here, and I think this is bigger news than than people think it is. This is this could fundamentally change gears five. I do think the coalition. Uh, as I said in my last video, one of my theories is I think they could still be in charge. Maybe splash damage or ramping up and, and helping those guys in some way or, or like you well, said, adding something. There is something else, right? Coalition actually sent, and somebody uh, who said in the chat, Nerf, Nukem, um, I forgot to bring that up, but the Coalition sent people over to help with the PUBG de- development team to get PUBG on the Xbox One X. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it, it's not rocket science here to know that there's people from the coalition now over at the PUBG offices, and now there's another studio coming in to make something. So something is fishy here. Something's going on. Yeah, it's interesting. And I, I think a lot of people, when we say, like, for instance, right, I'm like, Gears Dev done in the title? Just question mark, right? Because it's a real question. What's going on with Gears? According to this listing, uh, Splash Damage are, are taking the lead on the campaign. It's a real question. I think people get offended when you just ask something that could possibly be negative, right? I call them Nerf, Nerf Nukem. Nerf, Nerf Nukem. That's, you know Nerf what? That, I know it's Nuf, but that's it now. That's it. <laughs> Shout out to RPG, by the way. It comes to my streams. Love your RPG. But, uh, you know, people, you know, I think that's why we got some some downvotes there because people think we're just saying the coalition, Gears is doomed. And, you know, these shows are for people that listen, you know, for the people that are still here. And unfortunately, you get people that jump to conclusions like in my last video. You know, they don't really hear out what you're trying to say or why you put that there or whatever. So I don't know. Once again, guys, um, we thank you so much for showing up, supporting the podcast. We're going to start with outros. I'm going to give my sponsor another shout out lead gaming podcast. The link is literally right there in the description, right there with all my other information as it always is. I encourage you guys to go there, check it out. Let them know uh, who sent you Uh, support those that support the show. It really helps a lot. And we're going to start with outros guys. Um, Luca, I know you fell asleep six times. We're sorry. You know, it's been a rough day for a lot Luca, of us. Luca, wake up. Yeah, Luca. <laughs> sorry, I think you're mistaking me for JKB, sir. Uh, uh, JKB, anyway. Yeah. Well, JKB anyway. has a cover beard, so, you know. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, good good chill tonight. Uh, good topics. Had a good time, and I'll catch you guys next week. Okay. Nice and simple. Uh, D, man, what's going on? Where can, uh, you, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me at Twitter at D underscore batch and on YouTube at D batch. And for those that do follow my channel, sorry for the lack of content in the last week. I've been consumed with UFC, but I'm going to put an in-depth review up and I'm also, I've am also i also been capturing my career. So I'm going to show you guys how that's going as hey, well. Speaking of UFC, um, Lee Gaming Podcast, I was listening to an episode earlier and they were saying that there is a stand up and just go mode, kind of like fight night. Is that, that true? Is- that is correct. It's, there's there's no takedowns, nothing. It's just stand up. And and what's good about that mode is that the commentating is done by Snoop Dogg. 
Oh my gosh! So dumb. But Jesus will whistle, you know, like some it, fucking. You just imagine how cringy it is, yeah, right? It's, it's 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 so dope. So there's there's something for everybody in this game, you know. Like some people, it it is pretty in depth the game. So like you know, the learning curve can be steep. And if you don't want to go through that, just do the stand up mode. There you go. Just yeah, bang yeah. it out. And it's there's and your it's fight like, night. It's, it's, and it's and it's like it's like a in. They have a mode that's just stand up, and then they have a mode that's kind of like a, a fighter mode where there's like bars that are taking off your energy. And like as you're coming down to the last bar, you're like, oh crap, I can't get hit one more time because he's gonna hit me. And mm-hmm. you know, and, and it forces strategy. you to be defensive and strategic. And it's it's just a good game all around, man. Yeah. Well, uh, once again, man, uh, thanks for showing up as you as you have. Uh, Colt, man, where can people find you? What's going on? You can find me at <clears throat> Big X Little X four twenty Yolo Swag. Uh, big X little X. <laughs> yeah, you just, you just changed your name from Dildo Gaggins, right? <laughs> well, you know, on Xbox, you can change your name right now. Uh, I'm at Colt Eastwood at Twitter and on Xbox Live. And uh, sub to my channel if you want to see some stuff. I do something about every week. Mm-hmm. And uh, just thank you, everybody in, in the podcast, uh, in the chat for coming in to listen and talking with us and making it really enjoyable. We appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. You just released a video today, too, right? Yeah, I did. Okay, yeah. But just sunset overdrive footage to kind of give you like a, a seizure. Ah. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, I did the uh, chaos mode finally after like the game's been out like 17 years. Mm. And there's so much going on screen. And uh, yeah, it's kind of crazy. Yeah, I was really surprised when you said, yeah, I clicked multiplayer and it joined right up. In like a few seconds, there was a match He goes, there's on. people playing. I go, yeah, there was six people. Like, I think it's six player multi- multiplayer. And there were six people ready to go. And we were running around with pumpkins on our heads, shooting guns that that fire explosive teddy bears it was just a normal day <laughs> in sunset city hey uh we uh, thanks again uh to you jay as well for showing up man where can people find you uh i'll just give my twitter out it's at jay hoof so j-a-y-h-o-o-f-t put it in the chat there if you guys want to follow me that's great i do have my own podcast starting up next saturday on the 24th at 2 p.m eastern standard time it's uh myself and mooch so Is Mooch, that on your channel? yeah, it's going to be on my channel. So Mooch and I are starting a podcast and um, it's, it should be ridiculous. First guests on are like review tech USA. I might have Harley from Epic mealtime there. We've got spawn wave. We've got RGT 85. It's going to be crazy. So check that out on my Twitter. Then you know how to find me. Good shit. And uh, once again, guys, we'd appreciate it if you hit the like button. Uh, it helps a lot. And uh, one last shout out to League Gaming Podcast. The link is down below. Uh, thank you guys so much for checking out the show. It's been a rough day, but uh, this is the best part of my day personally right now. And uh, we do appreciate it. We're out. Peace.